Hello and welcome to the one year anniversary revision of Bevy Basics episode zero. In this episode, I'll be showing you how to set up a basic Bevy instance along with the Visual Studio Code extensions that I recommend when working with Bevy. This video is made for Bevy version 0.10 and is to mark the one year anniversary of me uploading Bevy content to this channel. To get started, I'll focus on the extensions that I recommend you have installed on your Visual Studio Code in order to operate in Rust and Bevy effectively. The first extension I would recommend you download is the Rust Extension Pack. This includes the Rust Analyzer, Crates, Even Better Toml, Rust Docs Viewer, Cargo, Rust Test Explorer, and Code LLDB. These are all the extensions that have been gathered together into one set for Rust development. Things like the Rust Analyzer will allow for Visual Studio Code to underline errors in your code. Other extensions like Crates and Better Toml allow for extensions and modifications of your cargo.toml file to be made much simpler. I would also recommend getting Error Lens. This allows for the error message to be written next to the line that the error occurs on rather than only when you hover over it. And finally, Pixel has a Bevy Snips extension which allows for certain things like setting up resources and components to be made simpler as they now have shortcut snippets. Once you've installed all the extensions, the next step is to initialize an empty Rust project. This can be done using Cargo. Either Cargo new and the project name, or in my case, since I'm already in a blank folder, Cargo init. Once we have our empty Rust document, we need to include Bevy as a dependency. As mentioned earlier, the current version of Bevy is 0.10 and this is indicated by the crates extension with its tick mark indicating that we are currently using the latest version. Although this is everything required in order to get Bevy up and running, it is also highly recommended that you include the line profile.dev.packages.star opt level equals three. What this line does is tell the Rust compiler that it needs to compile all your dependencies to opt level three. While in theory, Bevy can be very fast, while in development mode, Bevy has a lot of runtime checks, which can dramatically slow down the execution of the code when you start reaching large numbers of entities and resources. This can turn a lot of users away from Bevy as they will feel when they're in their development process that the performance is not there for their application. But by including opt level three, we compile all our dependencies, including Bevy, to the maximum optimization level meaning that Bevy goes back to being blazingly fast. This also leaves our code in unoptimized state, allowing for faster compiling times, since dependencies do not need to be recompiled each time you run the application. Now, if we return back to our main.rs, we can include the Bevy prelude at the top of our page. The prelude contains all the structs and resources publicly exported that you will need for creating basic Bevy apps. This includes things like the default plugins, all the structs required for system parameters, and other resources and assets that can be accessed by default with Bevy. Next, we need to construct a new app, insert the default plugins into that app, and then run the app. This results in the initialization of everything required for a very basic game loop, like setting up the basic window, adding all the default asset types that can be loaded, and frame limiting the application to 60 FPS. As you can see, if we run the Bevy application now, we end up with nothing more than a blank screen and window loaded. This is because we have not told Bevy what to do once the application is fully set up and ready to go. In order to actually be able to see something in our game, we need to spawn a camera. To do this, I make a basic Rust function called setupcam. I then include the command struct as one of the parameters passed into the system. Inside the system, I call commands.spawn camera 3D bundle default. This will spawn a basic 3D camera into the world. Returning to our main function, we now need to add this system to our application. We do this using the add startup system method and passing in a function pointer that we want to include as the system. Bevy allows you to pass in any function as a system, as long as the function's parameters consist entirely of the subset of Bevy system parameters. Startup system will mean that this system is only run once at the very start of our application, as opposed to every frame of our game. If, however, we do want a system to run every frame, we instead use add system. This will cause the function to run every single frame. There is also the ability to modify what scheduler and apply labels and ordering to systems, but that is beyond the scope of this video. Now, when we run the application, you'll see that the screen has been filled in with the clear color. This is a good indicator that our camera is spawned in place, but you still don't see anything in the world. That is because we have yet to spawn in any items to be seen. To give us something to actually view inside our scene, we will create an additional system, this one called spawn cubes. 
This system takes in the commands struct again, since we'll be spawning things into the world, plus an additional resource, this being the assets meshes. Bevy allows you to access resources mutably using the resmute wrapper around a type. This will return you a track reference to that resource, allowing you to interact with that resource. Bevy requires this wrapper to be in place to allow it to determine how to parallelize your systems. Since neither of these systems contain any conflicting parameters, they will run in parallel. The next step is to create our mesh and get a handle to it. This is done by calling meshassets.add and then passing in a reference to a box mesh. In this case, constructed using Bevy shape box with a size of one. The box shape will create a mesh but when inserted into the asset, we'll return a handle. A handle is a lightweight reference that is used by Bevy in order to allow for expensive resources to be kept in a single copy and shared between multiple entities. Next, I create two for loops, one through the X and one through the Z, from negative 10 to 10 in both. And in each iteration of the loop, I spawn a PBR bundle. Inside the PBR bundle, I provide the mesh and then the transform. This is constructed from the X and Z of the loop and multiplied by two, simply to space the cubes out across the map. It is possible to also specify additional parameters for the PBR bundle, such as a material and whether it is visible or not, but this was beyond the scope of this video. In order to get our cubes to actually spawn into the world, we need to, again, add a startup system with our spawn cubes function. And then when we run the application, you will see that we have a world filled with big pink cubes. At the moment, there is no way to currently move the camera around, so we need to add functionality to allow our camera to move. For the sake of brevity, and also to show off more functionality of Bevy, I'm going to use a third-party plugin in order to achieve a fly camera. Currently, the crates.io release of Bevy Flycam is not up to date, so I need to use a Git branch that has been updated. The Bevy community has a huge range of plugins that they have released for anyone to use. You'll even find some plugins that I have made the best place to find community plugins for Bevy is on the bevyengine.org forward slash assets. This contains a list of plugins that have been submitted by the community for others to use. It includes a wide breadth from 2D and 3D physics all the way through to AI and animations. There's almost certainly a plugin you can use here. Once I've included the Bevy Flycam as a dependency, I can go back to my main file and use Bevy Flycam's no camera plugin in order to achieve my Flycam effect. The first thing I need to do is add the no camera player plugin to my application with the dot add plugin method. I'm using the no camera player plugin since this means that the flycam will not spawn its own camera into the world. And I'm doing this since we've already spawned our own camera and instead we will modify this camera in order to work with the flycam. In order to make this modification, we need to include the flycam component struct. This is a simple marker struct that simply tells the flycam plugin which camera is the camera that it is supposed to be controlling. If you would like to make your own components to store data on entities in Bevy, you can do so by deriving the component trait. The Bevy snips plugin I mentioned earlier has a shortcut to do this. This type of struct is what Bevy refers to as a marker struct, and it's just a struct that contains no data and is used by queries in order to filter. So you may make something such as a player struct that indicates which entity in the world is your player, or a main cam struct that indicates which camera is your main camera. If you'd like to make a resource in Bevy, it is very similar to making a component. You simply derive the resource trait. This also has a snippet included. The key difference between resources and components for Bevy is that components are attached to entities and can have multiple instances in your world, whereas resources are only allowed a single instance in the entire world. Components are accessed using queries and resources are used by wrapping them in the resource tray and passing them in as system parameters. Anyway, back on with the show. We can then go down to where we spawn our camera. By wrapping it in a tuple and including the fly camera, we are now able to modify our camera entity in order to attach the fly cam to it. When the application launches now, it will grab a hold of our cursor and allow us to move the camera around. We can then use the basic AWSD keys and spacebar and shift in order to fly around. If you'd like more details about how the fly cam actually works and how you'd go about implementing it, I do have a video on this on my channel. This is everything you need to get started with Bevy. On my channel, you'll find a series called Bevy Basics, which goes into more detail about the actual specific architecture that Bevy uses under the hood and what things you can use as system parameters. You'll also find other content on my channel, like my personal game development and other series that I make, such as single systems. 
that will be great for expanding your knowledge on Bevy. So please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. I'd also like to say thank you to all the people that have been watching me for this past year. It has been a lot of fun making videos for Bevy and I hope to continue along in the future. I'd also like to point out that I currently have a Patreon set up and that my single Patreon will find his name hidden somewhere in this video. If you'd also like to help support this channel so I can continue making content for years to come, don't forget to check the description for my Patreon link. I hope you've all enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next one.